Hello my foodies, I hope you all are doing well. Today we will take you to the world of wine where we will decode the hidden science and chemistry behind its unique taste and aroma. The practice of making wine has been around for thousands of years. It is as old as our most ancient civilizations. But did you know that the taste and aroma of wine was quite different in comparison to what we see today? Grapes are the most common fruit used for making wine. But there are various other fruits as well, such as berries, apples and pear, with the help of which we can make fruit wine. Wine is an alcoholic beverage made by the fermentation of grape juice. In this process, that is during fermentation, yeast digests sugars found in grape juice, which results in the production of alcohol, carbon dioxide and heat in the process. Foodies, you all will be amazed to know that in the old times, drinking wine was considered more safe than milk and water because wine contains alcohol and it is present in sufficient concentrations to kill disease-causing microorganisms. Coming on to the variety of wine, it majorly depends on the region where the grapes are grown because accordingly, characteristic properties and composition of wines will also vary. In most of the food technology related books, you can easily find all the detailed classification of wine along with their minute specification and details. So we will not go to the detailing of each and every wine specifically, rather we will focus on understanding the logics and chemistry because that is the most difficult part to find out. Here you can see the cross section of grapefruit, its flesh or the inner part is generally white in color. And this is the place where maximum amount of sugar, acid and water is present. While the quantity of tannin is more at the tip or stem and also in seeds, due to which it tastes bitter. Now coming on to the skin, it contains anthocyanin, quercetin, resveratrol, tannin and catechin. So this was to give you a basic idea regarding the composition and how these components are distributed. Now if you talk about the unique process of making wine, then a special variety of grape is grown for this purpose. Fully matured grapes are harvested, that is, with proper sugar and acid concentration, and later these are crushed. At the time of harvesting, generally the amount of fermentable sugar is usually same. Fully ripened grapes have a higher fructose percentage. In case of wine making, usually some kind of wild yeast and some other microorganisms might be present on the grape surface and during crushing it can enter the must or juicy pulp. These need to be destroyed, right? So for this reason, potassium metabisulfite or sulfur dioxide is added to the must. Here pH is also adjusted between 3.2 to 3.4 by adding tartaric acid. Now an important point that one needs to keep in mind is that if we want to make white wine then the skin is removed and then juice is extracted. Whereas if red wine is to be made then the juice is extracted along with the skin. Because the pigment which gives its unique color to the grapes lies just under the skin which is extracted during fermentation. I hope now you all are clear with the fact that the color of wine does not depend on the color of grape from which it is made. For example, white wines are sometimes made from black grapes by only using juice. Juicy pulp obtained is also known as must. This must is inoculated with a pure culture of Saccharomyces ellipsoides, after which it is kept for fermentation. Sugars which are available for fermentation, that is, fermentable sugars, gets converted to alcohol. For example, glucose and fructose are examples of fermentable sugars. Yeast starts metabolizing glucose first because Fructose is two times more sweet in comparison to glucose, so it takes more time for fermentation. 
One more important point that you need to mark here is since the level of fermentable sugar varies in different grape varieties and their ripeness level, so for this reason they will not be metabolized by yeast with the same rate. So that is the difference behind the sweetness levels of different types of wine which are available today in the market. This fermentation is done in generally two parts. Number one is primary fermentation and number two is secondary. The entire fermentation process lasts for four to ten days. Primary fermentation refers to alcoholic fermentation whereas secondary refers to lactic acid fermentation. Wine may be dry or sweet depending on the extent to which fermentation has taken place. If all the sugars are used up during fermentation, then the resulting wine will be dry. And if stopped while some sugar remains, then the resulting wine will be sweet. In the case of red wine, after crushing juice including skin, seeds and pulp is transferred to the fermenter, whereas in case of white wines, pressing takes place before fermentation. When the entire process of fermentation is complete, the wine is allowed to clear, after which it is transferred to the oak barrels. This process is also known as racking. Here is the place where aging process begins. And also at this stage, secondary fermentation takes place, where wine loses all its harsh and raw flavors and simultaneously it mellows down. So basically we can say that it is the time for maturation of wine. Depending on the quality of wine, aging process also differs, after which it is bottled and this is how your favorite wine is prepared. The highest amount of water is found in grapes that is about 80%, followed by sugar which is present about 18-35%. to 35%. So till now we have seen what are fermentable sugars, so now let's become familiar with what are non-fermentable sugars and let's see what happens to them during this fermentation process. As their name suggests, these are non-fermentable sugars. These sugars are arabinose, rhamnose and xylose. They remain as it is but their concentration is quite low. At the time of aging process in the barrel, their content may increase slightly. Now coming on to the remaining components such as protein, acids, esters and many types of antioxidants, all these are present in quantity less than 1% or approximately near about 1%. Always remember foodies, acid content of any grape variety plays a crucial role in determining its flavor color and aging of wine. Well, that's it for today. Stay tuned for this kind of short and crisp information related to food industry. See you next time. Till then, goodbye. Take care.